Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about homeostasis and cells. Uh, whether or not you're a single celled organism or a multicellular organism, uh, homeostasis is important. It is uh, keeping the relative constant internal and uh, physical con and chemical conditions in your body. Uh, and, and again, single cellular organisms have to deal with this just as much as multicellular organisms. But if you take a look at the picture on the right, this is a uh, rather good tennis player named Rafa Nadal. He's from Spain. And if you notice, number one, he's wearing a headband. And that headband is a catch the enormous amount of sweat. As you can see here, though, it has failed. Um, Rafa Nadal, uh, like many tennis players, will sweat profusely because of the length of the game. Because they're playing you know, match and then set and then another set and then another set before they actually end the, um, the game itself. And so these matches can last very long, and in, what ends up happening is they, they really sweat profusely. And the reason they're sweating is keeping this constant internal physical condition. The condition they're working on here is temperature. As they exercise, their muscles generate heat, and that heat would normally overheat their body. But the sweat will draw that heat off their body as it evaporates. Single cellular organisms don't sweat, but they do have ways of dealing with overheating. If, for instance, you know, Rafa Nadal wasn't playing tennis, but instead he was in Alaska, he wouldn't be sweating. He'd be shivering. And that's one way that the human body is going to deal with cold. Single cellular organisms have the ability to deal with cold as well. Uh, that's just dealing with some of the physical conditions. But homeostasis is both physical and chemical, and it requires a, a pretty complex array when you talk about multicellular organisms, but it can be just as complex in single cellular organisms for some of the things that they do to keep homeostasis. If a cell or your body fails to keep homeostasis, they're dead. It's a simple fact. If you don't keep homeostasis, that living organism will die. And so if we look at multicellular organisms, we actually specialize our cells. And so cell specialization is when you have different cells playing different roles. For instance, your brain cells conduct thought. Red blood cells carry oxygen. Muscle cells contract. And so when we look at these cell specializations, each one of the cells is going to do its own role, and that role is meant to keep homeostasis. If they fail in their role, homeostasis will fail as well. And remember, if you don't have homeostasis, then that organism is dead. Homeostasis being the constant internal and physical uh, and chemical conditions. If we look at the levels of organization for cells, it's quite simple. Uh, first off, we have cells themselves. So in this case, we're looking at a muscle cell. These are individual cells that can function on their own. In a multicellular organism, they're going to rely on other cells as well because each cell plays a role. It's, it's like the job on an assembly line. The end product is what you want, but each person along the way does something. And so if we stack this, we have a, a, a cell, a muscle cell, and then that muscle cell will get put together in a tissue. So here you have a muscle tissue. This particular muscle tissue is smooth muscle tissue, but we also have skeletal muscle tissue and then cardiac muscle tissue. Smooth muscle tissue is predominantly found in the abdomen, in our digestive tract, and what it really is good at is slow, even contractions. And so that slow, even contractions really helps to pull things through. I think of it like Go-Gurt. If you have a Go-Gurt, it's a little package of yogurt, and, and you squeeze it from the backside and slowly move your hand up front, and as it does it, you know, pushes the yogurt out. This also happens on those awesome freezer pops. But smooth muscle does this all throughout your intestines in a process called periostalsis. But it isn't just one tissue of smooth muscle that makes this happen. Um, it, it works together with other tissues. Note that a tissue is a group of similar cells performing a particular function. These smooth muscle cells are performing the slow monotonous contraction of periostalsis. If we look ahead and we put those tissues together, we now get an organ. So we first started with, the, with a cell, our muscle cell, then we moved to smooth muscle tissue, then we stacked those tissues together and we got an organ like the stomach. Again, tissues working together to perform an actual function. In this case, we're looking at the stomach, but our stomach doesn't do everything for us in our digestive tract. And so if we take multiple organs and we put multiple organs together, then we're going to get an organ system. Organ systems are very important because each one of them is absolutely important. You couldn't cut out your liver or cut out your, you know, your entire small intestines or your stomach. That wouldn't allow your digestive system to work properly. And so each one of those components of the digestive system, each organ works together. Each organ does a job, and that job is to help homeostasis or keep the internal physical and chemical 
conditions of the body. If we look at these together, it's really quite simple. We have muscle cells. Many muscle cells go into a muscle tissue. Many tissues go into forming an organ. And then multiple organs go into forming a system or organ system. The digestive system is simply the one we are using here, but we could talk about skeletal, cardiovascular, skeletal muscle system, or your central nervous system as well. All of those are organ systems made up of multiple organs, and each organ is made up of tissues, and each tissue is made up of muscle cells or cells that are specific to that, cell, that tissue type.